other ones where there's apparently evidence of her having thumbs up a comment, which we won't repeat it, but is a lyric from a Rage Against the Machine song about, you know, terminating people, oppositions. There I can see there being a problem, but I don't know the facts. So like what, what portion of what she was accused of occurred before she went ran for office? And what, what portion of what she said was imputed to her occurred after office? And, you know, bottom line, where do you draw the line between having posted very shocking and offensive and politically unsupportable statements before you got into office and the impact it can have once you're in office? The, I mean, the problem I had with it is from the outset, constitutionally Congress punishing speech. So the, uh, the in my view, even uh, Congress's internal rules are also governed by the First Amendment, and they got to be limited where and when uh, they engage in a any act that is in response to someone else's speech. So there's speech that you make on the floor inside of Congress where they can punish because nobody else can punish it. The Speech and Immunities Clause makes it immune for anyone else to take remedy. So quite reasonably, they can impose internal punishment for violating that provision. To my knowledge, not a single statement she made while she was in Congress was the basis of their punitive action. And that's my core problem. My view is Congress's jurisdiction to punish a member of Congress for speech is entirely limited by whether they made it in the well or made it uh, while they were in Congress, literally, like it, you know, something made at a committee hearing, so forth. Any action taken outside of Congress, and I don't consider doing social media while you're physically occupied, physically present in Congress to be a congressional statement within the speech and immunities clause. Or to put it another way, if the state if the speech is not covered by the speech and immunities clause, Congress doesn't have jurisdiction to take punitive action related to it under the First Amendment. So that was my first problem. To my knowledge, none of her statements fit that category. Second problem was, again, a complete lack of due process. If you're going to hold someone responsible for their speech, then there needs to be a protocol. This should have gone through the internal ethics review. You go and you, if there's a specific rule that was violated congressionally, you cite that rule, you file a complaint with the ethics oversight portion of Congress. They get to go. There's a whole procedure where you get to answer it. You get to present evidence. They And then there's a hearing and a decision made. They decided, eh, screw due process. We're just going to scratch it all together. Hey, we're doing it for Trump, so let's scratch it for her too. That's the other problem. Again, this makes Congress look bad. They're, they're not they're not thinking about anything, but we want to punish a political adversary. We want that to dominate the news for two weeks because we're busy screwing over our own political base on the only popular portions of our relief bill. We promised two grand, not going to give it to you. Promised minimum wage increase, not going to give it to you. Uh, but we will make sure those big boys get taken care of. They're, those fat checks are going to get written real fast. So you don't want people focused on that. So you create a red herring of Marjorie Taylor Greene's controversial comments all, all of which were outside of Congress, to my knowledge, almost all of which were prior to her election to Congress and her uh, swearing in. And so th that those are my and then uh, all of which has not received any due process at all. Well, so th th those are my core two problems. And then the third one is, can the courts take remedy? There's no question, in my view, Congress violated the First and Fifth Amendment in punishing her. They clearly punished her, taking away committee positions. Those kind of actions have been identified as punishment before by other courts in like incomparable context. Uh, the only question is, uh, will the courts get involved or will they say, ah, this is Congress's internal business? There is a precedent that at least when it relates to expulsion, court, the U.S. Supreme Court got involved for Adam Clayton Powell. State courts have also got involved in comparable context and said Congress does not have the power to violate the first or fifth or other constitutional amendments when it tries to apply it in this context. And so I have problems with it from that perspective. Last but not least, by the way, one of their arguments of their impeachment power and why it's not a bill of attainder is that they're only punishing Trump for that, that they're limited to what somebody does while they're within their official duties. Well, this was not within her official duties that she took these actions. So they, they flip the script and say, nah, we can punish you for what you do as a private citizen once you're a public official. And we can punish you once you're a private citizen for what you did as a public official. They can't even maintain standards within, the, within days of each other. That's an amazing way of putting it, actually, because, it, well, I didn't fully appreciate that a lot of uh, Marjorie's comments came before she was sworn in. And in which case... Are they not, I guess they're not undermining democracy in the sense that they're not kicking her out of Congress, they're just kicking her out of committees. But people elected her 
presumably on the basis of what they knew of her and presumably they knew of her public social media statements beforehand. So they're basically penalizing someone and depriving them of their ability to do what it is that they were elected to do. Or are committees not what you were elected to do? I mean, what do you do in Congress if you're not on a committee? You sit around and just vote? You still have the power to vote ultimately, but key key powers are stripped from you. So the and that's the problem. In other words, that the what does it mean? And that's why there has to be limits. Historically, the limits they've applied to where they say Congress doesn't have the power. Congress has the power to have a bunch of internal rules about which committees you sit on, about a whole bunch of other things. But once you but to strip you of core duties that you've been elected to hold raise constitutional questions, particularly when you've done so in violation of your own rules and procedures, done so in violation of First and Fifth Amendment principles, and done so for conduct that did not even relate to your duties as a congressman. So the that's why, I mean, they wanted to set this precedent, and they're wanting this just to be the beginning. The next step they want is they want to argue under the 14th Amendment, subsection 3, then they can just start expelling and barring people from office. So the, it's like next election they lose, eh, just go in and, and let's kick out 30 of the people that could otherwise get in. Let's expel and not seat 20 members that we don't like. They're wanting to completely give, again, it's ends justify the means. That's why they're willing to pack the court. That's why they're willing to stack the Senate. They don't believe if the rules, uh, if the rules are applied and hurt them, their answer is screw the rules. So you have people who do not believe they're below the law. You have people who do not believe they're bound by the Constitution. And we just saw with the Spygate people, all of them, basically, other than one low-level guy, got rewarded. Uh, the, and some, several of them are getting prime gigs right now in the Biden administration. So that's why, that's why I have said between this and the lockdown lawsuits, we face the greatest constitutional crisis in our history uh, in, the, in the next four years. All right, and Cleopatra says, Re Marjorie, how is it possible to kick her off the committees when people like Omar and AOC and Maxine Waters have said far worse things in and out of Congress, double standard, too scary now? Yeah, no doubt about it. And that's why we got to have one. These are people who just don't believe in the rule of law. That's the problem. They believe in the rule of power. And the reason why the Constitution put limits on people just like this was because they said they cannot be trusted with that power. The problem is what happens when they decide to ignore that uh, and the courts decide to uh, stick their head in the sand. And so th they're creating more trouble and more problems. So uh, uh, over th that's why I think there's probably, I, I don't know if she will, uh, but I, I hope Green does bring a challenge to this uh, because it should be challenged. Make the courts decide what power Congress has and doesn't have in this context and clarify the scope and scale of that. Uh, because otherwise we face some, some perilous times ahead for the future of any constitutional government within its historic meaning and stupid question but just in case anybody wants to tweet this one minute out robert you would represent marjorie if uh, if the call came in uh maybe i'd have to think about it there, there are plenty <laughs> of other lawyers that are, are gung-ho on this issue i usually step in when i think i can uniquely contribute or where no one else is available to do so and now mark my word says cleo this is to cleopatra don't forget that about swalwell still being on intel committees as well and swalwell for anybody who doesn't know is oh, not just i'll see hastings hastings is a congressman who was impeached as a judge for taking bribes he's current <laughs> sitting in congress <laughs> oh, yeah. robert it's not it's it's frustrating beyond words uh, and, and you try to have these discussions and people who are convinced that the ends justify the means say, yeah, you know, I can rationalize it. If I can rationalize it, I'm going to, because it works for me now. The problem and, and is 90% like for... of these lawyers saying this is okay right now. Uh, if you, if you revert, flip the script and this was Brahma, they were trying to try do any doubts. They would have the opposite opinion. That's the problem. I maintain the same position on these issues, no matter who uh, impacts or effects. But other than Turley and Dershowitz, as Dershowitz said, he said, there's me, you, uh, me, you, Viva, and about six of us who still believe in the rule of law in America. And, it, and that's what we're fighting for is the rule of law. And uh, it, it's going to be it's but it's a worthy fight. It's just uphill right at the moment.